um, Heather has made me aware that I have skipped over her. So we will move back to 2.1 for our town administrator's report. Excellent. So tonight I just have a, I have about seven things to go through. I'm going to be very brief and I'll even try to paraphrase where possible because I know it's already getting late. Are you going to breathe? Um, well, I've been told numerous times I don't do that often, but I'll try to remember. <clears throat> no guarantees. So the first piece is staffing. So my administrative assistant, Kevin, who's sitting over to the right, will actually be leaving us because he received a job offer for nonprofit, and his last day is the 16th of this month. So this is uh, your last Kevin, meeting you. with us. <laughs> Steven. Kevin, thank you for your help. I appreciate it. Thank you. Where are you going to? Uh, it's a nonprofit out of Williamstown. Okay. Good luck. Thank you. So he will be with us, I believe, one more. We, no, he actually won't. Ah, yes, he'll be at a, with us uh, next week for our special meeting. In the meantime, we wish him the best of luck in his future pursuits. As for staffing of my office, Art has volunteered to help out while I search for another admin Art's during the back. day. Art's back. Yes, Art's back. Art will be multitasking. He'll be handling my office in the building department in two phones, so this should be fun. Uh, for minutes at Board of Selectmen meetings, you actually if folks are on TV. There's a young lady sitting next to me, Emily Snyder. Um, she is actually going to school locally, and she was interested in possibly checking out tonight's meeting and see if she'd be interested in coming back. I don't know. But <laughs> if she is, <laughs> we would love to have her out. for her help to type minutes for us. So, Emily, what do you think? Are you going to come back? Probably, yeah. All right, good. You haven't scared her yet. That's, I don't know. It. It's a sign. So we'll see how that works out. Um, next thing, annual town caucus. So the annual town caucus came and went. In attendance, we had 37 residents who voted. It was down from last year's precedent of 77, but consistent with 2013's 40 and 2012's 45. This year, we also did nomination papers, and we had 26 nomination papers pulled for elected offices for May. So that was pretty nice. The next piece is the budget. But we still have three vacancies, finance. So I'm working on the finance Board one. Board of uh, Yes. And there's one more. I don't remember what the third one it's is. On the right-hand column. Little. I didn't see the ballot, David. It's not on the ballot. It's just the listing. It's on the listing? I, I don't know. All I can tell you is as far as finance, we actually we've had a couple volunteer applications this week, and one of the applicants was interested in the Finance Committee, so I will the speak with them. Yeah, the Democratic Committee is looking for volunteers to have, a, so if they were interested, to contact Janet Kane for helping them do a write-in or a sticker. You can use stickers with their name and address on. We've done that before in town. So right now, there would have to be a write-in campaign. And if they're interested in doing it, get in touch with Janet Kane, and um, we'll be able to print out the stickers, and then we give them to, to the voters, and they just put them on the ballot. That's true. But there's one other position I'm going to keep thinking. I don't know. Planning board. Is it the planning board? I, I don't know. Okay. I don't, I don't have that list in front of me, David, so you're going on numbers and okay. info I don't have. Uh, so where am I? Budget update. The finance team is continuing to meet to review each budget on its own merits. We should be concluding our meat and potato sessions tomorrow. Thursday, we will meet to discuss the best way to present the budget to the Board of Selectmen, Finance Committee, and Capital Improvement committee Thursday night along with how we're going to present it and all the questions the finance team has. We will need to schedule a second meeting for the Board of Selectmen, FinCom, and CIC to finalize the approval of the budget. My thoughts were something along the lines of next Thursday at 6 p.m. After that, I'd highly recommend scheduling of a budget meeting for public comment the week after on a non-Board of Selectmen night. Next piece, financially, we have the annual audit. Our auditors are wrapping up their report for FY14. We have a few reoccurring issues from the prior years. A recommendation from both the auditors and from our financial consultant is to have a study of our fixed assets done as soon as possible so that we can begin to come into Gatsby compliance. Say that again? Which part? Gatsby. What Gatsby. Is that? Uh, it's a financial term that can be better explained by Vicki and Donna. But I do know that we aspire to obtain Gatsby compliance in order to get our bond rating eventually approved. So the, the carrot and stick is that, that we, our bond rating is not as good as it could be because we don't meet this Gatsby. Well, we, we have Gatsby. many things we could do to get it better. The first thing would be to get rid of our 
material weaknesses and but significant saying, deficiencies on our audit. What's the penalty for not being Gatsby, whatever that is, and what's the benefit for being Gatsby? Um, I only know about benefits, and the benefits are the fact that when we go out to rate, when we go out for a new bond rating in the next couple of years, we'll be right there with everyone else. Some of the um, companies who do it, Moody's, etc., are starting to require Gatsby compliance. Okay, is my understanding. Right. But essentially, rate. it goes back to the idea of a fixed asset um, report information on that. It's something we could do internally, but it would. When talking with others, they generally recommend having an outside firm come in. How much? One of the, I don't know, I'm waiting from okay. Vicki on some figures. And I know our auditors could um, possibly participate in the process. Okay. okay, so what else do we have here? Next thing we have is year end finances. Donna, Vicki, and I are sitting down on Thursday to review year end financial procedures, discuss procurement system for FY16, and work on a financial policy in response to the annual audit comments. Annual Town Meeting. Articles for the Warrant, the Budget and Capital Improvement Committee request will be discussed on this Thursday. Other articles for the Board of Selectmen to decide if they wish to pursue are as follows. First one being changing the Treasurer Collector to an appointed position. Yes. yes. The, I, I assumed as much. I've actually already drafted that in. Um, the second one that was mentioned several um, months ago, and I think actually Mrs. Walunas brought it up, was the potential of having a bylaw that requires folks to clean away snow from one's hydrants. Yes. Um, that one I'm actually waiting on a couple drafts from other communities because someone else asked the same question. The third one is a tag sale bylaw. We had previously discussed this at the last special town meeting and when the town clerk was starting to get frustrated because she was spending a lot of time to f try to find something as this board requested be more simplistic I had suggested to put a hold and actually ask the board if they felt there was a need for a bylaw for tag sales. Now, there's different arguments on this both ways. Almost every community has a tag sale bylaw and ordinance. I'm sure it happened for a reason. Um, the second question is, do we have a problem with current people having tag sales? If there's no issue and there's no feeling that we need to comply, then maybe it's a mood issue. The only, or, the only thing that, that, that would... The only reason they have something on the books is that what if your neighbor decided to set up shop on his front lawn and, and say it's calling a tag sale but sets up every Saturday? And, it, and it, is it's not really, a, is it a tag sale or is it, a, is it something more established? Well, that's the problem with having a tag sale bylaw is to have one that actually makes sense, you have to actually have stipulations and regulations. You have to have a definition. A tag sale is sure. X, Y, and Z. Um, you were limited to X number of tag sales a year you, and all the other pieces that go along with it. When we had presented it previously to the board, um, members of the public and the board felt that it wasn't warranted at this time in its current language. So we put it aside and said we'd come back to it and try to redesign it. The question is, though, is it desirable for the Board of Selectmen to pursue creating such a bylaw at this time? What if, what if, what if a neighbor became a nuisance, like someone like I described, and I'm not asking him, I know you, want, you have an understanding of, of the law as an attorney, but what would happen if that became a nuisance? We wouldn't have anything to really say they couldn't do it because there's no bylaw. But there's then, nothing that says they can't do it. But then we draft a bylaw and they keep on, keep on doing it, and then at the annual town meeting, we pass the bylaw. Can they say that they were being prejudiced towards them because we developed a bylaw that was specifically in response to what they were doing? Well, or? as of right now, we have no complaints that I'm aware of. But I'm just, so in this, in if you scenario, were to create such a bylaw at this time, there's no one that we're creating it to prohibit from doing such things. How many surrounding towns have bylaws? I want to say almost the entire state has bylaws or ordinances pertaining to yard sales and tag sales. From East Hampton. We actually tried. We took the one we drafted last time was a, I believe it was from South Hadley because we found it was one of the most well-written ones around and we presented it and it was torn between the residents and the Board of Selectmen and suggested that it wasn't simplistic enough. The problem with things being simplistic is is there a point to them in the first place? Because you can't just say there's a tag sale bylaw, it's five bucks. Great. Who is enforcing that? Who do you get it from? What is a tag sale? How often can you have tag sales? Because even if you have the tag sale ordinance, but as David said, you set up perpetually every weekend and here's your tag sale business, but do we does have that comply? Now? 
No. We don't that I'm aware of. So the question comes down to, is this an interest the Board of Selectmen wishes well, to guess pursue? The, the scenario I was painting, what if one were to occur and then we go about the business of getting a, a tag sale ordinance, could that party then say to us, you know, we were being prejudiced towards them because we made a bylaw specifically for something that they were doing? You want to I, mean, say I would say the argument can made, be made against that for the idea that perhaps they pointed out a weakness in the bylaws in the current system and okay. from that point you aim to enforce something that would apply to everybody. It's not just applies so to David. That, that's the only question I would have because then you'd be like knee jerking to something. There's yeah. so many what ifs out there. I don't know if I want to spend our time on the tax to be honest with you. If it happens, we deal with it. It's, you know, that's my opinion. Okay, so the next bylaw I have down here is stuff is items related to animal control bylaws and related fines. As you may be aware, in the past years, as far as animal control goes, it was handled by highway department workers. Up to three of them were trained. Once they received their training, they received an additional dollar pay per hour across the board. So that included, remember, the hours at night that they'd have to go to pick up a dog. So if they came out at 6 o'clock to pick up a dog, they get three hours minimum at that additional hour rate. Problem we run into, first of all, is no one currently wants to do it at the highway department. It's the heater in the hallway. Oh, I thought that was Paul Bowen nope. back there. <laughs> the second issue you run into is the fact, well, what do you do with a dog if you get a dog? Well, we have a kennel over there, which is great. So the question is, are our highway workers in the business of taking care of dogs? Because, you know, if it's snow season, they have to bring the dog inside because it's too cold outside. They have to come back to walk the dog. They have to feed the dog. Don't forget to water, bring water for the dog. This includes on the weekends, and now we're getting into overtime again. I've looked at other communities and seen what they've done. They have a range of what they do, whether they hire a full-time ACO, animal control officer, so they handle dogs and other animal complaints, or whether they pay a stipend. South Hadley most recently updated their materials and they now pay a monthly stipend to an animal control officer because theoretically if you're an animal control officer you're on call all the time. You have a 2 a.m. morning call because the dog got hit by a car. Maybe you have a 4 p.m. afternoon call because there's a dog that's lost or maybe there's an animal that's acting kind of rabid. Whatever it may be but they're on call. Kind of rabid? So can we put, do we, you don't have to make a decision about this right now, right? You do not. I, I guess in this piece. To regionalize it and call East Hampton and have them come pick up our dogs. Right, so East Hampton's ACO huh? comes from Huntington, which means he's going to charge you for the mileage on the way down and also oh, his you. hourly rate. So the only problem becomes there is what do you do? Plus, you still have no place to harbor the animal. You take him to East Hampton. No, I'm dead serious. this is a serious but there's, he's, East Hampton has no place to harbor the animals, what I'm saying. Okay, so let's put this on a, a future agenda to discuss. So, but is this a, an interested level for the board or an interested piece for we us to, to pursue? Because eventually something's going to happen. Do you need a bylaw on the annual town? Bylaw? I thought we were just talking about management. She's talking about bylaws. I don't think you need a bylaw for that. I think you just need to. Okay, so move forward. It's, that's an administrative okay. position. You just make a position. But if you don't, if you don't establish fines and the like, and the ability <laughs> to fine via the town bylaws, sometimes we're stuck. If you remember, we currently have fines in play. Yeah, so here's what I'm going to say. Given the fact that there's so much conversation surrounding where do we get one, how do we get one, and where does the person bring the dog if we had one, I can't imagine we're going to have a bylaw ready for the annual town meeting in three weeks. Okay. So the next thing is just um, an update. We have started working on getting quotes for the ADA compliance with our doors for the town hall. Um, we're hoping to have them finished in the next couple of weeks so we can report to the CPC and get an article on for town meeting. We currently have a company coming out Thursday to work with us. But this is a new building. The doors are not ADA? No. Okay, they got a waiver, be? Dave. Oh, wait a minute. That's what I Swanson? said. That's what Swanson I said. got a waiver on that? Which I think it was forgotten, and they got a waiver after the fact. The, so, archi the architect, I don't think, hit, hit the ADA qualifications. You all sat with me. Thank you. Okay. Well, ADA applies even on retro. Thanks, Heather. Heather, thank you. Great what job. Do what doors are not compliant? Right out here. Right there. Um, okay. So select board updates and liaison reports. Um, Finance committee has been meeting every day. There's a lot of conversation surrounding the budgets. Um, school committee met. They're talking about their budget and talking about school calendar, talking about 
all things school related. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, mostly I've been at uh, finance committee meetings. I would, I do want to bring this up though. On Thursday we're meeting with finance committee board of selectmen and, um, and who? Capital. The capital improvement committee. Um, I have a really hard time thinking that we're going to get through every department on Thursday night and for the sake of letting people know that we're talking about their budget, i.e. the Norris School and now the Board of Health, is it possible to have a, have a split it between the 9th and the 16th so that we are aware what's happening on this Thursday and which departments are we talking about next Thursday because it, it's really unrealistic to think you're going to get through police, highway, fire, school, and everything else on Thursday night. Well, my preference would be no. The reason saying is, remember, the finance team was essentially charged with putting together the budget. We have met almost every day for mm -hmm. the past couple weeks. We had all the public meet, or all, all the meetings with the large departments, the smaller departments. We met with everyone. The only one we haven't met with at this point is transfer and water enterprise because mm -hmm. their budgets weren't complete yet. So they, all, so they all know what their budgets are. They all know what so their budgets not, are. They all know what they presented. So they don't know, all know the suggestions from the finance committee. So what my so, but, it's, but, the, but what I'm trying to say, Heather, is going to have gone through this so many times. All the bloody details are done. So it, you could do it in a night. If you hadn't done all the bloody details, forget about it. It's three nights. The biggest, the biggest thing for Thursday night is going to be, okay, this is where finance team and finance committee have come with a budget. We have a few questions for the Board of Selectmen on how they want to handle certain items. We already have our recommendations. For everything else, Can you, I I do not think it's necessary to put this in two nights. It's first of all, it's going to be up to the board of selectmen to keep control of the meeting, so that I've already been letting people know. You know, the intent of this meeting is for the board of selectmen, the capital improvement, and the finance committee to have discussion over any you, contentious you, issues. Have you emailed that to us yet? What their recommendations are? No, because I'm still putting them together. Unfortunately, there's. Once you get them put together, you got to eat so we can read them before. Yes, you. absolutely. And what we're actually going to discuss tomorrow at our meeting is distributing, because what we've done is we did a transparent budget piece for essentially every single, every single board committee, commission, department, what have you. So an example would be conservation commission. So they actually have a sheet. Here's the layout of their people. Here's how much money they've spent over the last four years, including how much revenue they've asked for. And down here, here's their actual budget broken out line item by line item from salaries, from expenses, what they requested, and what they recommended, including FY13, FY14, and FY15 numbers. So you have everything right there. And that's something we need to discuss tomorrow about how to distribute to each of these groups. Because if they see what the recommendation is and they have no objection to it, remember, most of them are level funded exactly on the dot to the penny, there's going to be no contention for that. And I would suggest to the Board of Selectmen that this not be presented to all the departments as essentially an opportunity to come and argue their budget, but more so, it is strictly a discussion between the Board of Selectmen, the Finance Committee, and the um, Capital Improvement Committee because it has to be in public and it has to be an open meeting. It is not time for public comment. It is not time for departmental comment. If the board, if one of the three boards is up to an issue and they say, hey, you know what, we have a question. Oh, the department head's here. Fantastic. So here's our question. If we did this, then what? If we did that, then what? Do we have a priority of what we're going to look at first in case we run out of time? We do not, but we can develop that. The finance team is meeting tomorrow to finish. We have, I think, four small budgets to go over. And then Thursday, we're going to meet during the day as well in order to prepare what we need to ask for questions, what our you know, major contentious suggestions are that we need direction on. And we, we can set up the order of things and say, we're going to start with this. We're going to go this way. Well, the Board of Health is my concern. We want to make sure we get to them tomorrow or Thursday. And the superintendent would like to be here but does not want to come sit all night waiting to see if we get to him. Good and, point. And, and he's him. got a long budget, so I'd almost say let's get through the other ones first. But mo right. these budgets aren't that detailed, John. They're not from the day when you saw, like, the Finance Committee. This is more of here's the five line items, and this questions. is what we have. I, I get what you're saying, Heather, but I also know that sitting in a meeting, we can't get through three budgets in an hour, never mind an entire town in, if, in one night. You're expecting no questions from no questions anybody. From, you've heard it all. The Finance no. Committee's heard it all. I've heard it all. These people haven't heard it at all. This no. is the first time they're going to see or hear or look at 
anything budget related. I promise not to ask any questions. Well, I don't believe you. Well, you should ask, though. You, right? <laughs> but that's what, I mean, when, if you're going to present it and they've never seen it, yeah. there's going to be a lot of questions. And, I, and I'm hopeful that you get through it in one night, but I also think it's unrealistic to think that you're going to talk about the fire department and not have the fire chief want to listen to the conversation. The police chief's going to want to listen to the conversation. Whether or not we actually, it doesn't have to be a debate. It doesn't have to be a, you know, yes, I'm giving this to you. No, I'm not giving to you. You have to do this. But it, it, I think it's right for them to be a part of the conversation. Yep. So do we want to split it now or do we want to wait and see and maybe have the superintendent sitting there for two hours and say no? The, the problem you run into, or this is my concern, if you want to do it two nights, that's fine, but the second night has to be soon. Reason being, we're starting to get to the middle of April at this point. We still need to have a second meeting in order to actually formally approve everything, and I still recommend that be a separate meeting. You You're also to going to want a meeting just for the public to come and comment because maybe there's a question, maybe there's a concern. Whatever it may be, it's Im I think it's important for the Board of Selectmen to have a public comment night, so this is the public comment time and not when we're in the middle of the annual town meeting. That way anything needs to be reconsidered, adjusted, it can be done. And then at that point, the Board of Selectmen at their next meeting say, okay, we approve X, Y, and Z. So we can do a second night. I'm confident that as long as there's control given to how the meetings run, that it should be able to get through in one night. But if the board wishes a second night, that's fine. We already meet next Tuesday, and I already have penciled in next Thursday. So uh, would you say that a lot of the budgets, like the library, a few of the smaller, uh, smaller budgets, they're all set. I mean, they know what they're, what's going to happen. There's not much debate going on. Everyone was told when they submitted their budgets that it was going to be a level-funded budget. Did a they few people... Level? Did they submit level funded budgets? A few departments did not. Okay. And they were pretty much told when they came to the meeting that were level funding budgets. So any decisions that were made, and I think the board will be happy to see this, with the transparent sheets and all the notes we've taken, it's actually the whole thought process is there. This is, you know, it's level funded completely fine. Or maybe it's level funded and we added this. Or we decided it would be important. We thought that, you know, you actually get accreditation, so we added this. Or the third option is we did not fund this because. All right, so for, I think we're talking scheduling. So, I mean, if you want to, <coughs> out of courtesy to the Board of Health and to, to, to the superintendent, do the schools first, do the Board of Health second, get through the police and fire, and then try to clean up as many small, smaller budgets as you can. Because those are the big budgets, right? Mm -hmm. the, the, in the highway. Those are the big budgets. So it's the big, those are the top five. Schools, public health. Uh, you know, health department, police, fire, and, and highway. And once we get through that, then it's mostly the smaller budgets. You're talking the budget somewhere under 30000 a year, I would assume, the smaller budgets. I well, remember, the Board of Health, I wouldn't consider a major budget. Their it's whole budget is less though. than forty. Yes. It's a major, so that's major concern, but not a major budget I know, comparison. but I'm just saying that there, there's a major concern out of courtesy to the chair of the Board of Health just to get it out of the way and, and done. Uh, but those are the other major ones. Once those are done... It's a lot of, and it's unfortunate that that's how close it is. I mean, it's 500 here, 1,000 there, but that's what's left mm -hmm. for the rest of the budget because all the big money is spoken for. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it, it is possible to do it in a night. If you've had all that so discussion. So then, okay, then we keep it at one night. And is it okay for me to let the superintendent know that we will start with the school so that if he is wanting to be available and present, he can be here? Let me double check with finance team tomorrow, but I don't see why. We can actually notify them so you don't have to. Would you let him know? Yeah. Okay, thanks. I don't have anything else for uh, select board updates. Um, and if, it, if we don't complete it, at least we get the majority of the line share stuff, the, the heavy ones done. Okay. All right. Um, anybody else? Yeah, just public safety complex, obviously, we heard. So uh, we probably don't have another meeting for a while until we decide what to do. Okay. The uh, Master Plan Implementation Committee met uh, two weeks ago, uh, just reiterated... Uh, what everybody was doing, uh, did a little rail trail, did a little historic commission, and just brought everybody up to date, so nothing real major. In an yeah. effort to just skip ahead for a minute on that note, I would accept a motion to accept John Martin as the Master Plan Implementation Committee liaison. So moved. I need a second. You can't, uh, I'll second. Thanks, all those in favor? <laughs> Aye. Aye. Thanks. Ah. So, thanks, John. Anytime. Um, do you have anything else? Nope. Okay. Um, 
open time for the public. Well, I brought my. I hear crickets. Up. Oh. Um, we met with um, SYA and the Brayfield, and the next phase is a pavilion or something out there. Oh, we have a building that they're saying you've got to take that. You know, but you, to move that, you can't move it in one piece that That's far. It's a lot of selling candy bars. And second of all, Brick by brick restoration, it'll kill you. It'll, you couldn't afford it. No, but can I just suggest that the selling of the bricks for the pavilion at the school, I'm just saying it might be something to consider at, at Labrie Field. You know, I mean, a lot more people probably will see it and use it than just the kids at the school and just something. How, how about asking the Labrie's if they like Labrie Pavilion at the Labrie Field? Um, okay, so then our next, I don't think I'm missing anything, but if I am, I'm sure that Mrs. Walunas will let me know. Um, we have an appointment of Thomas Morse to the Master Plan Implementation Committee. We were contacted by Hank Barton with this information that there was one more opening on the MPI for the general public. Tom Morse is interested in the position. Volunteer form has been submitted, and he was recommended by Hank Barton. I would accept a motion to appoint Hank Barton. And appoint Tom Morse to the master plan implementation. So moved. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 We also have a PCF for Jason Deklos, which is a resignation from the Southampton Police Department. He resigned back in January, but we're getting the PCF now. Is there a motion to sign? So moved. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, who has the, oh, you have the warrants and payroll. Uh, we need to sign the town election warrant for May 4th. Uh, for those watching at home, the annual town election is May 4th from 12 to 8 in the Council on Aging. Um, there's also a Meet the Candidates Night, um, sponsored by the Democratic Committee in town, which will be. It actually changed dates. Okay. But I don't. It's, well, it's a week later. It's the on Monday that Monday, a week later. A week later. Yeah. So we'll be on April 27th at 6 o'clock in this room. So I'm assuming it will be televised. Invitations, I'm sure, will be sent to all those in contested races um, and information about how to submit questions and or be a part of the Meet the Candidates Night. Um, we will pass along as soon as we get it. What time? 6 o'clock, as far as I know. Um, okay, so uh, I need a motion to sign the warrant for the annual town election on May 4th. So moved. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, we have a conflict of interest disclosure form for Randall Kemp on the highway as the highway superintendent. Uh, this is. Or Don't lose this. One year it didn't get placed right, and we had to go to the state house to get it verified. Do you Randall that story? has an immediate family member who has a financial interest in the matter. Is, is it say that where this one is? There's two of those. I'm just looking for an address or something. I don't know if you're going to get that detail. Oh, you don't get that? I don't know. I don't remember seeing it. Okay. So anyway, there's two here. For Randall, both with the same reason. I would accept a motion to sign if there's no concern. So it's a it's a conflict of interest disclosure form. Can I see it for a second? Yes. Yeah. Okay. It's because of Amanda. Yes. Greg says, please speak into the microphone because he can't hear you. Can you hear me now, Greg? <laughs> <laughs> What's that? Greg says to make sure you speak into the microphone because they can't hear you at home. Can you hear me now? <laughs> well, we're waiting for text. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm sorry. I, I apologize for that. I tend to mumble as well. Um, so moved. Do you want me to sign or do you want to sign? sign Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Who texted? Greg. Her husband. Oh. 
required if that was. You can tell it's getting late. Yes. <laughs> um, would you like to read the warrants, John? Sure. I have a payroll warrant. PD 15-39 for a total of $39,097.82. So moved. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Payroll warrant PD 1539A for $136,186.98. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. So I'll wait on that. I'm going to do it this one. Okay, I have a treasury warrant, W15-40, for a total of $215,221.56. So moved. second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Let me check this one before we. Hey, Liz. Liz. Yeah. <laughs> what did I say, Liz? Heather, Southampton School District voucher. Do we need to? We don't do anything with that. We just sign the other forms, unless it's a spot for signature. I don't think so. Nope. So we don't need to do anything? Nope. Okay. They're just supplemental information. Okay. I think we're all set then. That's everything? Payroll. Did two payrolls. Oh, okay, with the exception sheet, sorry. Okay, payroll warrant P15-42, total of $228,263.76. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. We have minutes from March 24th, a regular meeting, and two executive session minutes from March 10th. Have anyone had a chance to read them? Yes, ma'am. Would anyone like to make a motion to approve the minutes? I'll make a motion we approve the minutes. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Um, for those in the public, we have a joint meeting with the Finance Committee and the Capital Improvement Committee meeting on April 9th at 6 o'clock. On April 14th, we have a Board of Selectmen meeting at 6 o'clock. 6 o'clock. On April 16th, we may or may not have a meeting. I would say we probably do. We have a meeting on April 16th, also at 6 o'clock. April 21st, we have a meeting. Oh, I'm going to see a lot of you guys. Uh, at 6 o'clock, April 23rd. Are you telling me every Tuesday and Thursday for the next three weeks? Well, I know the board at some point was disappointed that we were only on a bi-weekly schedule, so this is my way to make it up for you. So this is a bi-weekly schedule, <laughs> but the opposite way. Exactly. Twice a week. Yeah. Um, the one next week is to meet with all the different department heads on Tuesday, so that's fire, police, and highway. Uh, that's next Thursday. No, the oh, no. first is a Tuesday at 6 o'clock. Oh, then it should be 6.30. Thank you for the 30. Um, almost done. We're going into executive session. We are going to move into executive session. We're not coming back into open session. Uh, we will move into executive session per Mass General Law, Chapter 30A, Section 21 for, to discuss strategy with respect to collective bargaining or litigation if an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the bargaining or litigating position of the pub public body and the chair so declares. 
also for to discuss the reputation, character, physical condition, or mental health rather than professional competence of an individual or discuss the discipline or dismissal of or complaints or charges against a public officer, employee, staff member, or individual. To consider the purchase, exchange, lease, or value of real estate if the chair declares that an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the negotiating position of the public body. To conduct strategy sessions in preparation for negotiations with non-union personnel or to conduct collective bargaining sessions or contract negotiations with non-union personnel. By roll call vote. Molten aye. Martin aye.